So we are back out here on this Lincoln Aviator that we caught the other day. Actually, it's been almost two weeks now. Let's see, this assignment came over on 423. And we've been by the address a number of times since then. And the guy was just backing it into his garage when we came by. And he was staring my truck down pretty hard, but like I've said before, thank goodness the truck doesn't look like a tow truck. So there's no way he could have known that I was you know, there for him or anything because I didn't stop, I didn't stare, I didn't do anything. I just drove on by, kept on going. And since then we've made a couple of passes by during the day and we've made a couple of passes by during the night trying to hit different hours of the day. Like right now it's 11.14 in the morning you know, we've tried in the evening when, we, when you expect to catch people coming and going. We've tried the early, early morning, 6 a.m., 5 a.m., trying to catch someone coming or going with that, catch that garage coming up and catch them leaving with the vehicle and going somewhere. And I've also used my digital scope to look up underneath the garage door late at night, and the vehicle is always in there, and it's always back, it's always backed in. So these guys look like they're not actively driving the vehicle at this time. Hold on a sec. Certified this map. Oh, really? Okay. All right, cool. That's good news. Thanks. I'll close it. Just got to close on one of our assignments. Let's see. We have someone sitting out in front of the house where the aviator is normally parked in the garage. It's probably the wife, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go make contact. They sent us an email and said that they are due for the last few payments as well as no insurance on the vehicle. So the finance company wants us to make contact. How you doing? Is Josh home? Oh, are you related to him? Oh, okay. Um, I'm out here for a company called. They wanted to know what was going on with the payments on the aviator. He just talked to them yesterday. Well, I know that's talk. He, they, they want to know what's, they, they need money, and they wanted us to come out and find out whether we can collect a payment from you or pick the vehicle up. Or there's also no insurance on the vehicle. I don't know if you guys were aware of that as well. Yeah, the car doesn't drive right now. Okay. What's wrong with it? Um, uh, your tow, when you guys towed it? I never towed it. Well, they're repo people. Okay, it must have been someone they used before. Uh, well, they didn't tow it from here. They towed it from, um, uh, from another car lot. Okay. And he tried to tow it as a rear-wheel drive car at first. Instead of the all-wheel drive and didn't yeah. put it on dollies? He put it, he put the real one, on, the back two on dollies. Right. It's all on video, video camera, but. Right. Um. It didn't move too far. Okay. But it slid on the con on the pavement. Uh huh. And, like, and then he finally realized something's wrong here. Sure. He gets out and then he puts the other two on the dollars. Okay. So it messed up our whole front drive line. Okay. So it's in the Ford dealership of the shop. It's what? Getting an estimate at the Ford dealership. Okay. Is it not in the garage right now? Uh -huh. Would you mind lifting the garage and just showing me real quick? Mm -hmm. Okay. We know it's in the garage. I'm not going to buy your bullshit story. We've, we've actually scoped under the garage with a digital scope, so we know it's in there. A digital scope. Yeah, it's a little scope that you use for like looking down inside of engines for lost parts and stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. But I can see you're just gonna lie to me about what's going on. We'll go ahead and let them know that you guys aren't cooperating at this time. The next process will be we'll be back out here with the sheriff's department with That's a writ of fine. execution, I and don't we will. Care. You don't I, I know you don't care. 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 Please just listen to what I have to say, okay? You the next process. The, the next process, and I will. I, I I absolutely will. I want to make sure that you're clear on the next process, okay? We will be out here at the sheriff's department and a writ of execution. We will have them over at the garage door. Financial say, uh, well, we need our car back. Again, that's what I'm here doing right now. I'm requesting the vehicle. You're giving me BS that it's at a dealership when it's sitting inside this garage, and you're lying, okay? I can see the games you're playing. I've been doing this 26 years. I'm not going to play your games. That's fine. I don't play have to your play games. Your game. You can talk to me, right? right. right? What time will he be home? I'd be glad to talk to him. What time will he be home? What time will he be home? calls they don't even talk to me because it's in his name so that's a legal matter they have to talk okay. to the person who the loan is in okay so obviously this is a legal matter so it is a legal matter and, so and and i'm letting you know what the next process will I, be i don't care you, you threaten me all you want i'm not threatening you i'm you telling you what the next process we is put a digital scope under your garage. 
So, so, so you came onto my property. So, yes, it is against the law. It is. That's an invasion of our privacy. No, one. she signed yeah. a contract allowing us to know where the vehicle's at at all times. I'm sorry, not she. He signed a contract allowing us to have access to the vehicle at any given time. Read his contract, okay? It's not against the law. It doesn't mean you, Read can, the contract. you can't probe into Read people's homes. The it's not your home. It's your garage. Read the contract. It's no, it's not. It's my home, dude. Doesn't matter. It's not part of the Get dwelling. Off my property Read now, or I'm the law. The I'm leaving right now. I'm go. letting you know the next time I come back, it will I'm be with the law. Have a good day. Yeah. Oh, you will. Have a good day. So yeah. That was all intentional to get them stirred up since he, you know, he's not home right now and they're just keeping the vehicle in the garage and making up BS stories about it not being there, which we know for a fact it's there. I scoped it last night and said it was there. They want to switch the story about whether it's there or not there to, oh, that's illegal and they don't uh, understand the law, but we'll let the finance company know that we have uh, made contact with them and they are refusing to give us access to the vehicle as their, per their contract. And uh, we'll have the finance company go get a rid of execution. And uh, I look forward to the day that we show up back out there with a uh, sheriff's officer and a writ. And we'll see how smug she is then. These people. Oh, you gotta love people like that. Right from one fun repo to another fun repo. It's a uh, good time of the day to be catching people off, off guard. Out here at this uh, Dodge Magnum we have been after for quite some time. I've been by here many, many times. I've never seen the vehicle here. Just drove by the entrance of the apartment complex. And it's sitting right out in front. So I pulled past the entrance. There's the back end of it right there. I think my best bet's going to be to back all the way down to it. this uh, angle that way I'm aiming out when I get to it. This dude's been running and hiding from us for months now. our plate. It's a uh, gangbanger neighborhood, so I don't want to hang around here too much longer. I already saw a girl come out the front door with a baby, and she saw the vehicle was gone. I guarantee you that her man's getting a call right now. They're probably hauling ass this way, so we want to get out of this complex as quick as we can. I got a steering wheel lock on it, just in case somebody came out and tried to jump in and take it back from us. I also got the seatbelt secured with a steering wheel lock. So now what we'll do is we'll get out here to a safe location and uh, 
call it into the police as well as a finance company so that they know, they know we've picked it up. That was a damn good snag. Went from talking with that white trash, mouthy lion woman right within 15 minutes to a snag. You know, talk about a rush of emotions. Up, down, up, down. That's what this job's all about. All right, there's vindication for months of going by that address, skip tracing, looking for different locations. You name it, we've been all over the place for this vehicle. And to pull in here at 11.50 in the morning, and there it is just sitting there, waiting for the picking. Well, some days this job really pays off. It's repoing. <laughs> there's that Dodge again. I just gotta get video of that one more time. That is just priceless. That would make the ultimate repo truck right there. <laughs> Dually's in the rear. It's got at least a six inch lift on it. Oh man, I gotta snap a picture of that on my way out. Which is how this job goes. It's got, there's a lot of emotion involved in this job. I do everything I can to try to keep my emotions under control. I mean, you can see on that first one where, on that door knock, I guess it wasn't really a door knock, it was, you know, she's sitting on the porch smoking a cigarette and I just approached. And you can see that the way I approached is totally professional and I rarely will call somebody on a lie, especially when I know it's a blatant lie. And when she flat out told me the vehicle was not there, that it was at a dealership getting an estimate, I knew that wasn't true because I had just scoped the garage previous to stopping by there and knew the vehicle was sitting in the garage and that they had not been moving it. So her story about the finance company's previous repo company damaging it and all that stuff, that's just their story. You know, I know the truth of what's going on. They're just not making their payments. They have no insurance on the vehicle. And all they keep doing is calling in and making promises that they keep breaking. And that's just, you know, they don't realize we go out there armed with that added information. And in most cases, I won't call somebody on a lie because as you can see, the moment I called her on the lie, right into argument, right into this, you know, if, if I, if the vehicle had been out where I could have got to it, that would have done nothing but made my job harder. In this case, my job was to provoke some kind of a, um, something from them, some kind of a, a phone call, something, and usually if you can get somebody pissed off, they'll call into the finance company, whereas before they weren't even willing to call in. And so we called the finance company and let them know that we provoked them, you know, I, I absolutely told her that I knew she was lying, that the vehicle was in the garage. And as soon as I told her the vehicle was in the garage, she wanted to change the subject from, I guarantee you the vehicle had not been in the garage, she would have stuck to her story. No, it, you know, she would have wanted to prove to me it was not in the garage, just to, just to rub my nose in it. She would have opened the garage and showed me an empty garage. Instead, she said, no, I'm not going to open the garage, which is a confirmation that the vehicle's still sitting in the garage. And then her friend came out and started smoking a cigarette and started getting mouthy with me too. And it was two on one, both of them, yeah, that, that, back and forth, back and forth. And once you're in a situation like that, you're not going to really get anywhere. And so I just kind of, you know, she told me to get off her property, which technically when somebody asks you to leave their property, it's trespassing if you remain and the cops come. You know, as long as you get off the property before the law enforcement shows up, there's really nothing they can do about it. But, and I told her as soon as she said for me to get off her property, I will absolutely get off your property. I've just got one more thing to explain to you. And I explained to her the way the process was going to go moving forward, which is we'll get the sheriff's department out there with a writ of execution and then we'll see who's laughing, you know? And uh, I left it at that. And as I was crossing the street, they were both just throwing their jabs in on me as much as they possibly could. And I just turned around and was like, oh, your words, they're hurting me. They're hurting me, ow, ow. You know, just to show them that, you know, big whoop. Wow, that's the best you got? Are we in high school? Are we in grade school? Sticks and stones, really? You know, they totally lost all attitude, all adult attitude at that point. And we're just being a bunch of little smoking girls. And once it, once the situation gets to that point, there's nothing you can do but stand there and keep provoking it. And there was no there was no forward momentum at that point. And I can guarantee you she wasn't opening the garage. So we left that one at that. And we've, we've educated uh, them as to what's going to happen. We notified the finance company as to what has transpired, along with some notes in our, in our system, letting them know what happened. Uh, so that they're fully aware. That way when the people call in and say that your repo man came out here and abused us and broke in and kicked our asses and did this and did that, all these things that aren't true, they'll know the truth of what really happened and be able to, to, 
to deal with that accordingly on the phone. I guarantee you they're going to take what happened out there and they're going to embellish it and try to turn it into something that it wasn't. And that's why I record everything that I that I do and everything that I say. You know, and I, I really, you know, in retrospect, could have provoked her in a different way other than calling her on that lie about the vehicle not being in the garage. But I chose that one because I knew that one was absolutely not true. And uh, it went exactly the way I expected it would go. Anyhow, we've got this uh, Dodge Magnum picked back up. So we're not coming home empty. We've got one on the back. A good skip from about two months ago. Uh, always nice to get those really old ones off the books. And when I say really old, I mean it's only been a couple months. But still, been a lot of stopping by and checking that address. Every time I go by that exit, I jump off the freeway and go and pop in there at different times. And today, 11 o'clock in the morning, happened to be the golden hour to catch it there when they just, they finally got lazy and decided to stop hiding at whatever hiding spot they were hiding it in and left it right in front of the house. And we came out on top. So we've contacted the finance company. They're extremely happy that we've got this one picked up. We're going to go transport it right now over here to their impound lot. And then I've got a whole bunch of new ones that have come over in the process, about five new ones. So got a lot to get on video. Should be a good day. So we just stopped by the uh, auto auction to drop this vehicle off and the owner came out and says, don't put that here. He's like, he knows where it's been repo before and he's been here before. And this guy's a big ass Samoan. He's like, and he will, he told me he will beat the living shit out of me. And he'll bring as many friends as he needs to do it. And uh, he, I guess he's, the Samoans and some kind of Samoan gang up there in Salt Lake. So, very good luck that I got in and out of there as clean as I did without any kind of contact whatsoever. I saw that girl come out the front door and I seen her on her cell phone and I, I mean, she was probably calling in the freaking troops. So I'm glad nobody really got a good look at my truck. I'm glad we got out of there clean like we did. I, I, I you know, that area, it's all gang related. You know, it's not the same as going and picking up a repo anywhere else. They will flat out beat you to a living pulp and take the vehicle back from you. If they don't want you to take the vehicle, they won't let you take the vehicle and you might get some teeth kicked in. So uh, not even the dealership wants this vehicle sitting at their location. So they're having us take it to a alternate location that I can't show on video. They gave me directions how to get there. Uh, it's in a different city and everything. And they said that they, they're gonna store it indoors and they, you know, they, they know for a fact that he will show up uh, at their location. And if the vehicle's there, they're gonna have problems. And so <sighs> just, you know, puts chills up your spine when you hear a story like that. And you realize that, you know, had he been home and had three or four of his friends been there with him, you know, and they're all packing heat, uh, could have been ugly. Could have been real ugly. Heat repos like that. All right, so now we are down here in Provo looking for a new one. It's a 95 Ford Bronco, red. I'm seeing a red Bronco right back there in the back corner parking lot. The funny thing about this one is this is the exact same company that that girl works at that I uh, just barely ran the parking lot for looking for that silver Ford Taurus. Uh, same company and I know that they have, that when I was in there talking to their office manager yesterday or their HR manager, he mentioned that they had a Provo location and so when I saw this repo order come over this morning I went by to give an address, the vehicle was not there, and so I decided to come over here to the POE, and on my way over here, I noticed that it's that same exact marketing company, so I'm guessing that that red Bronco over in the corner is going to end up being our repo. It matches the year and the color. We don't have a plate on it, but we'll check it. He's got the wheels cranked. He's got it backed in, and he's got the wheels cranked hard to one side. Wait, if that doesn't tell you that he's expecting a repossession, I don't know what does. Check the last of the VIN here. 5916. I'm going to back up to it like I'm expecting it to be it because I don't need him to come running out of the building and jump in it and take off. What we're probably going to have to do is hook it from the front undo the linkage and pull it out
nice if we could hook and drop this one and get him to make a payment over the phone. Our VIN. Almost wonder if I can't get it from an angle from behind here. Got kind of an opening. Come in here at an angle. I might actually be able to get to the rear of this. First thing I gotta do is open it. Got a steering wheel lock on it. <laughs> if this was your truck, you'd be over here in my face. Looks like he's got a nice Fosgate amp in here in the center console. I've never heard that one before. Got a couple of uh, guys up here clowning me that are making a fence behind me. I think I'm going to take the time see if I can get to the back end of this thing. Based on the layout, the fact that nobody's come out of the building yet, he probably can't see his vehicle from where he works in the building. See if I can get it from behind, get it lifted. The wheels are severely turned this way, so as I start to back up, it's actually going to pitch this way into the parking lot. Let's see if I can do this or not. That won't be in your way right there, will it? Nope. Okay.
I've seen it. <laughs> Too bad. You thought he was smart by backing it in and cranking the wheels to one side. <laughs> you realize you left half the fuel behind him. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted you to, you know, work a little more, that's all. I don't even know what's coming. I don't even know what's coming. I don't even know what's coming. First bite on it and it wasn't a good enough bite on the other tire. Now we've got his wheels cranked. Gotta steer this thing accordingly. Watch this tree. turn really sharp into the parking lot which is what we want there we go now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull around front switch my camera view too so I can see the top down view so I can make sure that it's not going to make contact with my truck the angle that I'm pulling it at we're going to make contact with this dweeb. Thinks he was so smart to do what he did. So watch now, as soon as I go straight, watch what the Bronco does. See so how it stays kicked way out to that side. Just gotta make sure that I hug this side of the parking lot as I go over here. We get up here to where we're ready to leave. And then I'm gonna go make contact with this kid and see if he wants to make a payment right now. Get this thing dropped. Can't. Then we'll be leaving with it. Yeah. Hey, you got a second to talk privately? Oh yeah. Great for it. That looks familiar. Oh yeah, what's going on? <laughs> We're picking it up for your finance company. I just want to know if there's anything you need to grab out of it right now before we take it. Oh. Any need personal items and cell phone chargers. If there's anything you don't need immediately, yeah. you can take care with them. And then I also need to come with me and straight the wheel out a little bit. Okay. I don't know. If you want, if you, do you have a cell phone on you? Yeah. Why don't you give them a call right now and see if it's something you can take care of over the phone. If not, then we'll... Well, I'm oh, okay, then. If you already know you're not going to be able to handle it today, then... Yeah. You know. uh, this will be taken directly to their impound, and so after you take care of all the fees with them, we do have a fee that we, we bill them, but you'll pay that fee through them. You won't pay it separately to us. So, but yeah, if you can turn it straighten the wheel out for me, that'd be great. Yeah, I probably have a lot of ACI here. Probably Yeah, just turn it on and just crank the wheel so it's straight and then relock it. I'll put a steering wheel for this. Hey, for 95, this is a dang good. Has it been? I'm assuming it's been painted. Yeah. Yeah. That should be good there. Do you know anything about the finance company? I just know them themselves. I don't you know. know it's, I thought there was a 30 day grace period. Like I know I'm late, but I don't know. If there okay, is. That I don't know because I don't actually do any loans with them, so I don't know what their grace period is. But I know they're trying to get a hold of you, and they may not have a good cell phone number for yeah, you. Yeah, I haven't gotten contacted by them. Okay. Do you, if I call them, like. If you want to go step over I'll, there with me, I'll, I'll, I'll verify the number they have for you. Just that way you know who, who they've been calling. Okay, and they also have an address on 950 East. Yeah, that's, that's right. All that's still good? Yeah. So and your appointment's good, so just give them a call. Uh, you got the number to call them? No, I don't. What's the number? 801. 
and just tell them who you are and tell them, hey, your repo man just picked up my Bronco. What do I got to do to get it back? Okay. All righty? Yeah, cool. Okay. Where, where is the impound lot? In Orm. Okay, cool. Okay. And now we got those wheels turned straight. And we know that there, it's a locking steering wheel, so it'll automatically lock in the straight position, so... Now it's tracking nice and straight behind us. He made it clear that he knew he wasn't going to be able to take care of it today because he doesn't get paid till Wednesday. So, you know, we do our part. We give a lot more headway than most repossession companies out there. That's uh, about all I can ask for these days. Watch our wheels as we pull out of here. Looks good, looks good. Repo in 101 right there. That's how it should be done.